Welcome everyone, this is curl 7.82.0, pres the presentation on video. I'm Daniel Stenberg, I'm the host of this presentation. I lead the curl project, I founded it back in 1998. So this is me, that's my website, follow me on Twitter for more curl blab non-stop all the time. I've been working on curl, as I said, since, since uh, well, actually since before we called it curl. I started it, um, we renamed it the Project Curl in 1998, that's 24 years ago soon. I work for Wolf SSL, I do Curl support full time, so whatever you need in terms of help with Curl, curl related things, Curl porting, Curl bug fixing, Curl features, get in touch and, and uh, I'll help you do it. This is a curl presentation, I'm going to talk about curl 7.82.0 and of course I'm going to do it sort of the way I've done it before. So we're talking numbers, we're talking security features, bug fixes, and something about the future that might or might not come uh, in the next release cycle or so. Um, this is of course release 206, hence why I, I jokingly call it impartial content because it, you know, the response code message for HTTP the response code 206 happens to be partial content that you, uh, when when you do a range request with over HTTP and you get a part of, of a resource back, it, you get a 206 response code back. So 206 releases in, in this particular one, uh, we have an awesome amount of 67 contributors and 39 of them were new. So we continue to have a lot of new people reporting bugs and, and contributing help in the project. So we're about to reach 2,600 names in that thanks list that we have in the repository. 43 out of these contributors wrote code or have commits that are, have been merged into curl during this cycle. And again, for 24 of them are new. So we are now, well, as you see, we have now surpassed 1,000 commit auth authors in the project, which is super awesome and fun. And we're, um, we're really tr trying our best to make sure that we can welcome everyone's contributions and help. So if you want to do something in curl, there should be a really low margin for, for helping out. We should strive and continue to be accessible and, and friendly and helpful to get your, your feedback and your help into the project. In this, in this release cycle, the number of days until, uh, sorry, from the previous release until this release, we reached 59 days, which is an unusual number because we usually go for 56, because 56 is exactly eight weeks. And so this is eight weeks plus three days. And it's simply because my <laughs> ski trip last week. So I was basically away with the family last week, so I didn't really want to do the release on the Wednesday because, uh, you know, uh, it felt better to spend that time with my family on, on family stuff and then just save this um, work a few d days more and then do it. So I had actually did it uh, on the Saturday instead of the Wednesday. So we got a 59 day release cycle and we're up to 8,751 8, days since the first curl release. A lot of days, <laughs> many, a uh, long time. And in this release, we have not rewarded anyone anything for any security reports because we haven't gotten any security reports that have actually been confirmed a security problem. So we remain at the same level as before that we have re given away almost $17,000 in, in um, monetary uh, awards for the, in the bug bounty. I'll get back to that. <coughs> Let's instead focus on what we have done in this in this release. And in particular, there are two notable new things, which is, is pretty much of a lie because one of the new things is one things we've removed. So we started by removing a notable thing in curl, a notable thing that most of you haven't even, even heard of because it's called MesaLink. MesaLink is a TLS library and that we have removed support for in this release. No more MesaLink. Most of you didn't know it existed. 
and, and now it doesn't exist oh well it is not supported in curl anyway it it was it is a tls library uh, with a OpenSSL api built around the russell's uh, library but they stopped development of this library well over a year ago so uh, and it hasn't been used a lot so we just thought and figured we can't really encourage our users to use this so we drop support for it because we don't want we don't want future users to go this route really because it's not a it's not a future for anyone and maybe the biggest thing is in the to, on, on, only in the tool side with the curl tool and that is the dash dash json option so if you haven't read about it i wrote a special blog post about it explaining how it works and why it's there it is a sort of a shortcut for doing posts when you want to send a post containing json json as in the data format so you use it like you use you normally use uh, like you know use dash d to send a post in you in here you instead replace that dash d and you use dash dash json and it is a shortcut to get some um the content type header sent and the accept header sent and uh, adjustment how how it works when you do multiple of these uh, options but it is basically a convenience option for users who are sending json to servers which happens to be very common these days a lot of endpoints a lot of rest apis and a lot of things are accepting json inputs these days so it is getting more and more common so this should make it easier for a lot of users to send and use json with curl we have other ideas of of making um, json easier with curl going forward so we'll see what, what happens we might do more json related things and adding more things going forward <clears throat> we managed to cram in an uh, an amazing number of bug fixes this period uh, this release cycle 172 i counted them or maybe they were 173 doesn't matter a lot of them and i decided to just you know highlight 15 of my favorite ones some of the ones that actually could use some explanation or me just pointing them out to you um, if you want to go uh, if you want to read all about them, of course you go to the change log on the on the curl website there most of the changes are have links to their particular issues or pull requests that you can read up about the details you can read the specific discussions there and, and the pull requests and the changes and everything but uh, i'm going to just highlight a few of them here and i want to start with saying i talked about removing a tls library before the, the mesolink one uh, the bear ssl is a tls library that curl supports since uh, a number of years before but uh, in this release cycle we had several bug fixes done uh, in how curl uses tls and in, in particular then when bear ssl is used so it should be much better now there are some pending fix more pending fixes for bear ssl that i hope to, that we hope we can land for this release so it's getting improved we had a, um, a small effort around removing calls to Stirland in curl and this has caused us uh, some discussions on irc and other uh, elsewhere uh, if this is really a worthwhile effort or not or if the compilers usually remove the Stirland calls or not but we basically removed maybe a, around two thirds of the Stirland calls in a typical in, in some of the use cases at least that we tried and that we measured and basically no the compiler cannot remove the Stirland calls in a lot of situations when we're passing in pointers without the length so then we really need to do Stirland calls and we replaced a lot of those situations by passing in the pointer and the length and the length would then then be calculated now at build time so now we can better avoid that dynamic sterling call in in practice in real numbers in real world sort of you know performance measurements those those calls are not going to be measurable really because they were on small strings they were talking sub microseconds sub microseconds and even if you remove a hundred of those sub microsecond calls you yeah it won't be noticeable uh, 
It just felt good because they were pointless and unnecessary and we could easily remove them and there was no penalty for doing it. So we did it. We're going to deprecate NSS going forward. So we have sort of put it on the deprecation list and said in six months we're going to remove the NSS support in curl and to make this more noticeable to all users of all potential users or existing users of NSS today we we've made uh, we made it sort of we've enforced that you need to have pass on this option with NSS deprecated to be able to build with NSS so you really need to put this option there and this should make it more uh, apparent to users that it is actually deprecated already we're going to remove it in about six months or so unless someone you know yells very loudly come to us and explains why why you really need nss and why we shouldn't do this and blah 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 and take some responsibility for nss going forward we did some bug fixes and, and we now erase some more sensitive command line args from you know when you do a um, Basically, when you use curl from the, as a command line tool, you know, you can enter a lot of different options to curl. We have a lot of them. Uh, and, you know, we added one more in, in this time. We have 240, is it 246? Yeah, I think it's 246 command line options. Uh, and some of them are really a bit privacy sensitive. Like if you enter a um, password on the command line you don't want it to appear in the PS, PS outputs so that if you have a two if a multi-user machine you don't want one user to ex to read the password from another user on the machine this is a fragile operation and it's really not a it's not, a, not foolproof at all and really most arguments could potentially be sensitive in some way or another at time so maybe it should just erase all command line arguments from from the ps output but that would also be impractical because then you wouldn't know how to differentiate one curl command line in the ps output from another so we erased a few more than we did before which is i, I call it also call it fragile because it's also timing sensitive because since curl is the one who that erases these command lines it means that they're actually present there for a short while before curl can do it so it's not a foolproof thing someone else could still see them so mm, we've been debating there if we should do this at all if we should maybe stop the practice completely to just not make it into you know provide this false sense of security to people but mm, we haven't really landed anywhere there so we we still do this maybe it, it helps users another thing uh, added to the list of deprecations that we are going to remove in six months is the support for npn that's a tls extension nobody is using it anymore it was created invented made for negotiating speedy you know the protocol that existed that then later became http2 and early on in the http2 world we could actually negotiate http2 proper with npn so it, ha it filled some sort of purpose back in the 2013, 14, 15 time period. Uh, it doesn't anymore. The browsers removed support for this a long time ago. I think Firefox was the last one in 2017 or so. So we're approaching five years since they were supported by browsers. I think it's time that we drop support for this as well. And again, unless someone yells very loudly and, and tell us why not. Uh, we now support changing the, the sudo header scheme that is used in HTTP2 and HTTP3, really. Uh, it doesn't really have a corresponding thing in HTTP before HTTP2, which is also why it sort of fell through the cracks here. But now we can change it. You can change it as, a, as you can change any other header, really. The interesting part with doing this is that I noticed that basically no servers anywhere ever care about the contents of this header so you can pass in whatever junk you want and it won't make any difference both uh, or let's say that includes http2 servers and http3 servers it should still use the scheme from the url so we're doing the right thing i'm just saying that it seems that nobody actually cares about it right now at least i went through and did remove um support for a bunch of old legacy not 
you well i shouldn't say not used platforms but um the platforms might be used but the adaptions in curl uh, they were really not used so i report remote support for tpf network and vxworks and for those special adaptions we had in curl and for some of these that was a lot of code and basically we, nobody has built with that code for in some cases over a decade so they were that was just basically stale code unused bit rotted remove it in case someone wants to bring back support for these platforms go ahead and do it and, and do it properly and we we would bring it back in most likely but getting rid of old craft that isn't used is good and in, and um, uh, actually someone then got back to me and told me that the vx works build actually still works even when i removed that particular special dedicated vx works stuff because modern vx works doesn't even need that so we got rid of code we didn't even need it still works for vx works and in terms of tpf tpf happened to be the final operating system that we supported that didn't use ascii so Bam, as a following follow up change. <laughs> I misspelled the slide that says remote, but I meant remove support because I removed support for this define and this define exists internally in curl and actually provides conversions or runtime conversions between one system and an and ASCII basically back and forth in, in the TPF case. It's a EBC DIC case. Um, it's it's then not ASCII. And so now we no longer support running curl on non ASCII systems. And this was a pretty good cleanup because it removed junk code. And as, it, as, as nobody has used TPF for such a long time, uh, I'm pretty sure it didn't even really work. So crafty code used for a particular single platform that was never even built anywhere or at any time so good stuff getting rid of uh, old dead code good good things makes the code easier to read makes it easier to follow and less uh, well fewer if that's someone pointed out that we didn't allow this function called from within callbacks in curl the curl multi-assign function is pretty much designed to be able to be used within callbacks but then by mistake we inhibited or prevented that in, in a previous release we uh, uh, undid that mistake now going forward we did several changes and fixes for http 3 in this release both in the quiche backend and in the ngtcp2 backend those are two different backends right so the, the, they use different libraries so if you want to build with http 3 you go with one of these uh, these sort of forks in the road and we've improved http3 in both those forks forks in the road we still have more things to fix and there are still pending bug reports on http3 uh, even after this but uh, we're getting there we're in taking them one at a time we removed re reduced removed fixed memory use a little bit when ftp is disabled so back again to what i'm talking about when i talked about when but I didn't talk about it right here. But if you want to build a particular curl, build with less features, less protocol supported, you can get one with a smaller footprint. And one of our constant things that we need to polish and, and make sure that is that when you remove feature, remove a feature or a thing in, in the build, it should also be completely removed, right? So you don't have extra data or extra code that isn't actually used anymore because you disable that feature or that protocol. In this case, when you removed FTP support, it still allocated memory for things that wouldn't be actually used because FTP was disabled. So this makes curl, the curl footprint smaller in memory in particular when FTP is disabled, if you build a curl version without FTP enabled. Uh, when, when you run the curl tool on a particular well, I would say Linux, Unix, BSD, I think even Mac system, Mac OS. Curl will now look for the default config file, the what I used to call .curlrc, but it's in this case, it will now also look for that file in the .config 
directory, which is a sort of a semi-standard for how to look for dot files, really. But as you can see, it's no longer a dot file then. It's a dot config, but it checks for the file without the dot, without the leading dot in the curl rc name. Just a tiny detail in how it finds that curl rc. That you <laughs> right now it actually has a pretty complicated way of finding that file. So if you want to understand that, read up, read the man page. It explains it. <clears throat> okay, three more things that we fixed in this release. And uh, this one, someone already found a bug or filed a bug report and because this made someone realize uh, it didn't really work. So we have a few options to the curl command line tool that only works if you build libcurl to use CARES. And, and those command line tools are, in, are related to particular DNS resolver things. You can point to a specific resolver or a specific request when it comes to DNS resolving and if you don't build curl with CARES you can't uh, demand or request those things so if you try those options now without the particular support with the right support in libcurl now curl will fail and it will actually tell you that it can't fulfill your request blah 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 um, so you you know previously it would just fail silently and just ignore doing what you asked for which was re really not very friendly and people would then sort of assume that it did what you asked it for but it didn't now you know when it won't do it an old dear favorite is of course um trailing dot names no sorry <laughs> trailing dots in host names in urls as that's you know that's that's a gift that keeps on giving and we it'll never get boring because i'm sure we'll get back to this again in the future but if you use you know if you specify a url and you keep the dot the trailing dot in the host name http colon slash slash example dot com dot slash path curl would previously remove that trailing dot in the host name because of reasons because it's a complicated issue because you can't use that trailing dots in the sni field for example when you which is included in TL, in the tls handshake but it turns out that then it really doesn't work that way so we need to keep the trailing dot in the host name uh, except for the sni field which as uh, anyone can then think well wait a minute how how will that work uh, uh, i don't know i don't know how that will work <laughs> We'll see. Anyway, this at least this change, we, we are now much more uh, closer. We're where Clara is now behaving much more in the same in, in spirit or similarity and, and how the browsers work in, in terms of trailing dot. So I think it's good. If you have any problems with this, of course, file an issue and we'll keep on talking about this, even, you know, refining this as we go forward. A fun thing I rem uh, fixed in this release, I, I think it's fun, maybe it's not that fun, is that we didn't really re handle uh, reading back uh, return code zero when we read uh, TLS data in the Wolf SSL backend. Again, another TLS library backend. Uh, I thought it was fun because I this, has, this bug has existed for such a long time and nobody had discovered it before and it was pretty bad in that curl would sort of misbehave and think that the connection had closed when it really hadn't uh, really stupid we fixed it it's better now so if you're using the wolf ssl backend you really want this fix huh, those were 15 of my my um, i call them favorite maybe they maybe they're not really favorite fixes but they were at least 15 things we fixed that i wanted to tell you about anyway going forward I'm, I'm i'm i feel convinced that we are going to call the next release 7.83.0 because i think we are going to merge changes and features and things that will warrant us to bump the minor number um, we tend to do that and i know we have a bunch of pull requests already pending waiting to get included that will sort of require us to bump the, the minor number anyway so 
uh, I expect that to happen. And some of the things that we are sort of we have in the pending list, they're not guaranteed to happen, but we have them, you know, we discuss them. Some of most of these things are available as pull requests already. Some of them a bit old, so that we're eh, well, we'll see what what would will happen with this. So we have we have more HTTP three fixes coming. I don't think we have any PR for any of this right now. We have bug reports, so there are certainly things to fix, even if we haven't fixed them yet. Um, we're we've been discussing this for a long time. Maybe maybe the time is now ripe to actually merge it. A way to set the default st uh, stream window size when doing things like uh, for HTTP two and HTTP three. It is in particular interesting if you're going to pause a particular stream while other streams are continuing because then curl needs to cache a lot of data in memory and depending on the size of the window it could sort of you could then limit the amount of caching necessary by limiting the window size <coughs> msh3 ms here stands for microsoft so that's a microsoft hp3 library for it is the pres suggested, presumed, proposed third HTTP3 backend. So there's a pending, there's an, uh, a pull request already there to build and uh, to build HTTP3 supporting the curl using this library. And this MSH3 library itself uses the MS Quick library underneath for for the quick part. So those are sort of hand in hand um, in a kit. To, to get HTTP 3 supporting the curl. And I think this one is interesting in particular, well, it, at least it is uh, particularly interesting for Windows users is this can use the S channel TLS um, library on Windows instead of one of the others, uh, like it uses boring SSL on, on non Windows. <coughs> so that's at least. Uh, potentially a way for, for users, uh, curl users on Windows to use the native TLS support to get uh, HTTP3 support there. Uh, we've talked about managed sieve before, maybe we'll go there. If you have opinions about managed sieve as a protocol, tell me, um, ideally in that pull request. There are going to be more hyper improvements to make sure we're slowly, slowly, gradually trying to get hyper uh, full-fledged member of the of the curl backend family so that we can remove the experimental tag from there we're down to 24 remaining uh, tests that are still disabled i have a bug on http2 multiplexing but yeah we're going there slowly we have this proposed option new option maybe the 247th command line option called no clobber it's an option to prevent curl from overriding the output file that you have on the command line so basically if the if if you're trying to download something with the curl command line tool there's and you as I say saved output in this file and when it runs it notices that oh that it already exists a file with this name it'll just try to append a number on the file name and another and another and another and, and until it finds an unused number and then use that as a file name instead. Um, inspiration, of course, from other tools that have this kind of option. It's not that complicated. Um, it seems to be, it's almost there. There's some tiny little thing left before, but I, I'm expecting this to get merged for this release. We're talking about exporting importing SS, SSL session IDs to make uh, TLS session resumptions better when you, for example, close down curl and restart curl and to, to get the session IDs back because right now session ID caching is only done in memory. So if you close handles and restart them, you can't get uh, a reused session ID. Um, we're also talking about maybe uh, supporting this bit which would prevent curl from using the custom method when doing when following a redirect even if you said if you set the custom method option 
I'm sort of waiting for more support for this, for people to voice their support. So it's an ongoing pull request. It's, I, I did it a long time ago, sort of I've been refreshing it over the time. I'm not convinced that I will land it now either because I feel, I don't feel that people are actually that interested. So maybe I'll just, you know, push it forward. Maybe next release. I have another new command line option called remove on error, which I also hope it actually explains what it is there in the name remove on error so if you if you download if for example if you do like this you enter a command line tool you want to download this url into this file um you know you start chugging download stuff something happens there's a failure curl returns a failure what happens to that partially downloaded file it stays there on the disk that's the default behavior of curl. It'll just, you know, return a failure and you can do whatever you want with that truncated download. Maybe resume a transfer, maybe look at it anyway. Well, I don't know. You do whatever you want. But this option would then, if you would use this option, this new option, uh, curl would then remove that truncated leftover piece, partial thing that may or not be a good thing for you or not. If current returns a failure for the transfer using this option, it would remove the output file. Remove on error. Those were things that we are considering right now. I'm sure that the others will pop up because they're, they always do. Users are on curl all the time and, you know, people just show up, they bring their stuff and we consider it. So there's certainly you no. Know, um, once we open the feature window and we have the uh, allow features and requ um, changes to get merged, we can merge anything as long as a good pull request and we agree in the project that it's a good thing to merge, we merge them. We plan to do the next release, then as I said, probably called 7.83.0 on April 27. Uh, so I said that we adjusted the release schedule a little bit this uh, previous release uh, cycle so that it was 59 days instead of 56 so the next cycle is actually going to be three days shorter so it's going to be 53 days if we stick to this which is the plan so basically get back to wednesdays every eight weeks again so get back so i have this google calendar with set release dates for long for basically a few years into the future and by uh, sticking to the schedule we make sure to stick to that schedule we already know the dates for the release dates for a very long time as long as we stick to the eight weeks release release cycle and i think we should <clears throat> this said from that release this release 7.82.0 we have 380 days to go until we plan to ship curl 8 on march 20 2023 that is, you know, as you can see, then a little, little over a year until we do that. Curl 8 is not planned to be in a big bang uh, fireworks release. It's going to be just the iterative, just clean slate with version number wise, but otherwise we're going to rem remain compatible. No API changes, no API, particular API changes, just bump it to version 8. <coughs> On Curl's 25th birthday, I, I should add. Okay, uh, and again, if you have anything you want to have support, uh, you know, privately or whatever, um, so contact us at WolfSSL and I can help you uh, already this afternoon if you get in touch now. <clears throat> and if you have any sort of uh, security Sorry, no, this is not for, if you have any bugs or a, sort of you found a typo somewhere, file a bug. Uh, if, if curl doesn't do what you think it should do, file a bug, uh, whatever, all the bugs in there. If you find here, if you have a security problem, you, you think or you see one, you suspect there is one in curl code or in anything related to curl code submit it here and we keep it privately and we discuss it in you know in our security team before we make it uh we announce it and of course we do this as uh, 
speedily and as hastily as we can so there won't be any we won't drag our feet just because you reported here we keep them of course private and secretly just to not hurt existing users any more than necessary so that we discuss every angle of the of, of the problem we research it we document it and then usually in sync with the next release we announce the, the problems the fixes the, the the entire thing and of course if your reported security problem is actually confirmed and and as a security problem uh, leading to a security advisory we will reward you with money and we are trying to constantly raise the amount the reward levels so i i, I can't guarantee you but we're talking about um, uh, above a thousand dollars at least per for pretty much whatever you can report that is a security problem these are the official curl sponsors this month uh, this time a lot of these are of course long-term sponsors they've they've been with us for a while and they keep on sponsoring us infrastructure uh, and money wise and of course we need all of that and that is what helps curl running uh, forward into the future as it does so thank you all, all the great sponsors that is all i wanted to say about curl 7.82.0 on march 5 2022 i will be back again uh, talking about the next release uh, at the next um, opportunity of course so until then have a good curl time.